Welcome everybody to Grand Champion quarterfinals between myself and Bob Debanese. This is a rematch. I beat Bob uh, two games to one in the West Division, but he actually uh, won the division, so he's a top seed. He's chosen Standard first, and that's because he was un he's undefeated all season in Standard. I head into this with a lousy record. I was one and six in Standard, so I decided just to change my deck up here and try a Grixis Pirates build. So as a top seed, Bob gets to choose the format each time and he also gets to go on the play. So uh, you can see my hand here, I've got a, a more aggressive, um, I think it plays 29, 29 uh, creatures. So I play the unclaimed territory. Now I've got two options here. Die Fleet Neckbreaker pumps both, but I'm going to go f for a Fathom Fleet Captain, which draws a counter spell. Pass the turn. He's down to two cards. I'm thinking surely he's running out. I'm going to play the Ruin Raider because uh, Die Fleet Neckbreaker is the key card that I really want to resolve. It pumps every attacking pirate plus two. So he's down to one card. I think I've run him out of town now. Particularly once he plays the Gear Hulk, I know I'm pretty much safe. Gear Hulk I don't care about because uh, my two attackers have flying. He does resolve with Glimmer though, so he's going to be able to load back up. But I will be able to force six points of damage here, regardless from the neck breaker. I was hoping to snag that Glimmer with my Dire Fleet, but it's not to be. I keep the blue open for Siren Storm Tamer. I can use it to protect my Neckbreaker as well. You can see Bob's down to nine. He's got three cards in hand, so he's going to need two cards to get rid of the Neckbreaker. The first one to get around Storm Tamer. Uh, and, and also, I'm pretty confident he's in blue black, so he doesn't have any sort of sweepers. He doesn't have Settled Wreckage or Fumigate. He might possibly have um, Yehenny's Expertise post sideboard. But we'll have to wait and see. At this stage, I don't really want to commit much more to the board, just in case there's something going on. But once I drew the Admiral's Orders, I felt pretty confident I've got this one in the bag. I'll just send the two guys again, but knock them to three. So he's going to need to find something to fight through a counter spell this turn. He's going to play a Gear Hulk. Uh, this one I will counter. You can see I can counter it for a single blue because I get the raid trigger. And so now he's got two cards in hand. He's got six mana. He needs to find something immediately. Um, otherwise he's dead. Cycles hieroglyphic. So he's at five mana. He's looking for something. Or six I should say. My guess is it was a gear hulk he was after. I look at his, um, as, once he plays Azor's Gateway, I think I've got this one because he's down to four. He activates the Gateway, he's down to three. So he, so the best he can do is remove the Storm Tamer. So Kite Sail still gets him. So we go on to game two. I've actually sped this up to three times because this was one of the worst, most boring games you will ever witness. Uh, me and Bob both got chronically land flooded here. So it was just a basically a... Um, and Bob had a million and one creature removal spells it was basically just got to the point where it's lango 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 and uh, eventually I think I was run out of cards he had uh, seven cards in hand and so, and we both had a ton of lands so I, I just figured let's go to game three but we'll we'll go through this nonetheless to see how bad this was I play a crook and we actually have a counter spell fight here but I'm, I'm going to protect this. I've got the raid trigger again. The reason I protect it is because um, it can shut down his scarab god for targets and it also stops torrential gear hulk for targets and those are the only two cards that I actually saw that he had. So now I start to go to work just uh, exiling each turn. I've got this pesky little 1-1 one -one, but he's going to get rid of it with owner's hunger. 
And so now I start to use the crook just to get rid of um, creatures out the grave because he's at he's nearing five mana. So uh, that's Scarab God territory. You can see I've got a Vraska's Contempt and an Admiral's Order. But um, I, I'm just getting rid of stuff that I think is useful here. He lets Ruin Raider resolve, but he's just got a million and one removal spells. Moment of Craving, that gives him two life as well. I think he seemed to cast about six of those. <laughs> just, just joking, he's, uh, but he just seemed to always have that card. It just kept bringing his life total up and up and up. I keep exiling cards. Uh, Glimmer, I, I didn't want to exile so quickly because if I get the that Dire Fleet Daredevil, I can actually get it back. Here's a Scarab God. I can either counter or... I choose to Vraska's Contempt instead with backup of a counter spell. Get rid of another card. Again, just more lands. I think I end up drawing every single unclaimed territory that I had. Still just ex exiling creatures out of my grave. But it's got to the point now, I'm down to three cards. There's a Duress, so I'm going to hold on to that so that I can use it to protect something that I'm going to cast. Dire Fleet Poisoner, I can flash in the end of turn. Uh, he's doing his own deck thinning here, Field of Ruin. Flash this in the end of turn. I don't really care if it gets countered. A 2-2 two -two is not going to win me the match, but there's one of those... Uh, Cravings, he's actually at more life than what he started with. Look at him now, he's got five swamps. Now, Neckbreaker is a very good card. That's something I'm interested in keeping. So we'll see what's going on. But no, we can't see because he counters it. So I'll play the Neckbreaker. He counters that, and I just let it go. I think the Neckbreaker by itself, I got two counter spells for, out of that. Gonti, and at this stage, I've pretty much almost had enough. He plays my Dire Fleet that he gets from the Gonti, targeting Duress, but I use my Crook just to get rid of that Duress. And again, another land. I'm sort of getting sick of it and getting ready for game three at this stage. I don't have... I've only got four removal spells in my deck, so... I'm not going to be able to beat those two cards if I don't... Uh, unless I have more creatures than he does. Die Fleet Poisoner is a possibility. I'll flash it in here. But again, there's another moment of craving, and that was enough for me. So we're going to game three. Uh, I'm on the play this time. I'm going to just duress because I want to play Fathom Fleet turn two. I get rid of one of his moment of cravings. By the way, I've turned this back down to uh, two times. Here, I've got to get that moment of craving, otherwise my Fathom Fleet guy it just dies, but... I'm going to run it out there and make him tap out next turn. I will play my Sorcerer's Spyglass. I don't have red to be able to play the Fathom Die Fleet Captain. And I name Scarab God. So he can't get any activations from the Scarab God. Again, I don't have the red, but I'm going to be able to get it next turn with the Field of Ruin. So I'll sack the Field of Ruin just to get my red source. He still has five cards in hand, so... Now I'm going to start baiting counter spells. First one's a Die Fleet Captain. Ruin Raider and Dying Fleet Neckbreaker is a toss-up which one I value more. Um, Ruin Raider nets me more cards. He passes a turn. A Warkite Marauder is just a crappy 2-1. I'm going to see if this can find a counter spell. Fingers crossed that it can. He's going to find a cast a glimmer, which kind of suggests to me he's looking for something specific. He untaps with my Warkite still in play. Goes to six mana. 
So he's going to use a removal spell, so I'm pretty happy about that. And he plays out, so now he's tapped out at, um, I can resolve my Die Fleet Neckbreaker. He cycles a fetal pulls, and at this stage I'm starting to think he's running out of resources as he uh, get, exiles my Neckbreaker. I'm going to play my Ruin Raider here. I can ambush the Contraband Kingpin this time. But I don't think he's going to attack. And he, he plays this really good play here from Bob. He's going after my black source. And I don't have another swamp. So I have to, in response, cast a Dire Fleet. And I don't have it. So he manages to get one over me there. And I find another Drowned Catacomb anyway. I just attack into him here. He gets the one life, but it does get me a trigger from to, um, Ruin Raider. And Ruin Raider would go on to, to prove to be a very... Um, you can see I actually do have a Swamp. I could have got it. Ruin Raider would prove to be a very uh, important card in this matchup. It's going to start netting me massive card advantage. You can see he's up to a huge 27 life. Now he's got a con another Contraband Kingpin. There's the Neckbreaker. So I'm going for the Neckbreaker. Um, I'm going to play out the Storm Tamer. I, I did that wrong. It should have been Storm Tamer first. Again, I get the trigger from Ruin Raider. So Kite Sail Freebooter. You can see he's down to two cards off the draw now. And I've got Dire Fleet Neckbreaker protected by Siren Storm Tamer. So we'll see what's going on. Two islands. So at this stage, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I can keep Admiral's Order up. As a counter spell, and I was gonna swing the Ruin Raider, but I thought better of it. He could double block, and then I would lose my card advantage. So I'm just gonna send one. Next turn, I can send two. I get a duress, but it's no good. There goes one of the islands. So he's still got one card in hand. It's the Fetid Pools, which he cycles. So he's still got one card I don't know about. Another Siren Storm Tamer. Send the two guys at six damage. So now I'm at end of turn, I get the draw again. It's an unclaimed territory that's going to enable me to play that other Storm Tamer because I wanted to keep the two blue open for Admiral's Order. He's down to two cards. So I don't know what they are anymore. There's two islands have been played. I've got a Vraska's Contempt now and a Admiral's Order, and I will have two Storm Tamers to protect my Dire Fleet. So at this stage, I'm pretty happy. There's nothing under Kite Sail Freebooter, so I just let that Fatal Push resolve. I think he should have uh, actually Fatal pushed the Siren Storm Tamer there. Now I've got two, so he's virtually got no chance. You can see he, had, he only has a land in hand. He's got no chance of getting that Dire Fleet Neckbreaker off the battlefield now. And so th at this stage, I think I'm pretty much home. Again, I'll, I'll play this to see what he's got. It's a counter spell. Play out another creature. I've got counter spell backup, so I've got him down to four with a counter spell in hand. I don't think there's any way out of this for him now. He has a look to see what he can draw. He cannot find anything, so. He concedes. We go. To, he chooses Legacy for Game 2. That was Bob's first loss in Standard this season. And it was only my second win. Uh, this one I'm going to keep on the play. I don't actually know. I think I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this. It, it just needs a... Um, a way to bring something back. To reanimate. Bob's on the play here. Volcanic Island is not what I want to see on the play. It's immediately I'm thinking uh, some sort of control deck. Um, play out my Lotus Petals. I'm keeping the Unmask because I can I can use it to get something into the grave. Jeskai now, so no idea what he's on, but 
I draw the exhume, so I'm going to go for it this turn. I, I still have the Chancellor trigger, so he would tap out if he had a spell pierce, but he can do that. Uh, Force of Will, I've, I can't get around. But I, I'm pretty uh, comfortable here, so what I'm actually going to do is fire off the Unmask on him first. To see if it's clear, this is going to draw out his Force of Will. There it is there, the Spell Pierce. So in response to the Spell Pierce, um, he's going to tap out, which is crucial. He's going to have to tap that White Source. I can now sack that, pay for it with my Dark Ritual, and then... Um, cast my Exhume to bring back the Grizzlebrand that I just unmasked on myself. So at this point I'm going to draw 7 cards because I'm looking for another Unmasked and I find it. Uh, and I can use the second Unmask for this Unmask to see what he's got going on. 2 Rest in Peace there and a Swords to Plowshares. I take the Swords to Plowshares because I can't beat 2 Rest in Peace. Um, at this point I'm thinking either he's done something hell dodgy and put two rest in peace because he knows what I play or I think he's on um, Helm of Obedience deck. Uh, I know Bob very well so I know he's on the Helm of Obedience deck at this point. Uh, and so that needs four mana. So I quickly exhume an Iona naming white. He can't play the rest in peace. And from there, he's locked out of the game. I don't, I don't believe there's anything in this deck that can... Uh, only energy field, actually. Which would have been a huge problem. So he, he can't Swords to Plowshares me, and he can't... Um, he's down to six. He needs something to top deck here, but he can't get it. The other thing I'd, I was looking at is Thought Seize would get around Suppression, that field as well, Force Field or whatever it's called. So I'm just going to fire off a Collective Brutality, make sure there's nothing funny going on. Drop him to four. Yep, absolutely nothing in hand, so he's just dead on board. He goes to three, he's hoping to top deck that energy field, he doesn't get it. Now we've skipped to game three because we had all sorts of glitches in game two. I had to mulligan to four and I had an exhume, uh, which was my last card in hand. I He revealed a force of will with blue cards, so I, I had, couldn't have won that anyway, so I just conceded to him. We, had, we were having problems with the glitches, and so now we've gone straight to game three. I am going to entomb, I believe, a Tide Spout Tyrant. So now it's kind of crossed my fingers and um, hope I can resolve something next turn. I, I'm, I'm not in a bad position here because I've got that Serenity which will be able to remove the Ley Line and any of the enchantments that he plays. But uh, Reanimate was just a perfect draw, so I played the, I played the lands out. I'm thinking Spell Pierce here, but I can do this two ways. I can Exhume. He stifles my Bloodstain Mire, you see, so that kind of locked me into the Reanimate because I don't have to play around Spell Pierce. Grizzlebrand comes back. I, I'm down to 10. I don't want to go to uh, 3 just in case he's on, has a, has a Lightning Bolt or something. I can never be sure. I'm not that well versed in Legacy. At this stage, I'm crossing fingers. Please don't play Rest in Peace, and he doesn't. So he's going to play an energy field and pass the turn. I, I decide I'm going to just play out my Grizzlebrand because he's. I'm looking for an answer to that. Uh, I'm going to entomb a, um, a Tide Spout Tyrant, which I can bring back next turn. So what, what, what I want to do here is play the two spells. So I float the three here, play this out. I'm going to exhume my Tide Spout Tyrant. I, and I, I cannot unmask him because of the ley line. So I'm going to unmask myself, which means I have to pitch that animate dead so that I can bounce the energy field of Tide Spout Tyrant to clear the way. Push through 7. 
I'll put the the inkwell. I, I did reveal two serenities in my hand, but I think you'd be doing well to be able to beat two of them. And I have the two fetches to find my white source. So at this stage I have lethal on board, so he, he has to find something next turn. Um, more than finding something, he actually needs a swords to plowshares because uh, he knows of my two serenities and he knows that I can bounce. Um, he knows that I'm going to be able to bounce his force field or whatever it is he decides to play. So at this stage it's looking pretty good. I'm, I think I'm a lock now for the semi-final. He plays a ponder, still looking for that swords to plowshares. There's a bit of a pause. I don't think he's found it. Brainstorms to tap out, and that means that confirms I am going to the semi-finals, eliminating Bob two games to zero. I was pretty happy because I wasn't sure about standard coming in here and I was, I was pretty confident with my legacy. I've only lost one match all year.